Monitor your air quality at home or at work. Let's check this out. Dave Taylor here and I'm checking out this. This is the Inkbird IAM-T1 Smart Indoor Air Quality Monitor and it's really cool. The coolest thing about it in my opinion is that it uses an e-ink display technology so the display is crisp and clean and it has ridiculous battery life. Two double A's can last up to four years in this device. So really, really cool. Lots of interesting characteristics but Let's start by opening it up. I have my opener. So obviously don't try this at home unless you're a trained professional. Although I guess if you buy this, you do have to open it at some point. So we'll do that and I will close the knife back up so it's safe. And then let's unbox this. Now it's not the most complicated device in the world because it's really well engineered. So what we find is on the front is instructions. And then on a lower box, there are two AA batteries we'll have to pull out. And then here's the device itself. And you can see this is not a sticker simulating the screen. This is actually the screen display. It is that bright and crisp. So let's pull it out. We'll put this box aside. Let's do it this way so you can get a little bit of that screen. And I'm gonna to need to pull out the batteries. Let's see, we can do it from this end. And it includes two AA batteries. And again, these AA batteries can last up to four years. Now, why am I saying up to? Because it depends how frequently you're actually analyzing your environment. So you can go every minute down to every 10 minutes. And if you do it every 10 minutes, it's four years of battery out of these two little batteries. That's pretty impressive. Honestly, 10 minutes is probably plenty because you'll find that your CO2 level, and that's the primary thing this is measuring, but you'll find that your CO2 level, so you see it's starting up here. I'm gonna put the back back on, easy enough. And it doesn't vary that much. And just as a sort of gentle reminder, <laughs> the way we humans work, is that we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide or CO2 and plants do the opposite. So they actually consume CO2 and produce oxygen. So together we're a pretty good team. But what can happen is if you have a lot of people in an enclosed space, that CO2 level can go up and up and up. So when I've put this outside, it gets really low. You can see right now, it's 934 parts per million, which is still very much in the safe zone and very typical, and I'm breathing right here. So if I had this more central in the room, I'd get a more accurate reading, but that's okay. You'll watch, it'll go down a little bit now that I put it a little further away. So where might you use something like this? Oh, and I suppose, let's show it. We have the quick start guide and the user manual. It's pretty darn easy to work with, I have to say. Um, Probably the trickiest thing is pairing via Bluetooth with the app. And I've already done that part, but I can tell you that took me, I don't know, 30 seconds if that. On the back, there's a little switch. You just turn the switch, you go into the app, and it's ready to roll. Um, let's see. And I'll show you the app in just a second, because your question might be, hmm, CO2 monitor, where would I use this? And the answer is really anywhere that you spend time. So home, office, and nursery is an excellent place to try something like this. An RV would be brilliant, right? Especially ones where it's like the vehicle and the living space all in the same area, because you wanna be able to monitor your air quality to make sure it's as good as possible. Now, if you have high CO2, open your windows, turn on a fan get that fresh air circulating, that can make such a difference. But inside this, the heart of this unit is a very sophisticated device called a Sensair sensor from Sweden. And it is accurate to within 3% of the value you would get with a like multi-million dollar super fancy EPA testing device, which means it's like plus or minus 30 parts per million. So if it's reading 675, 
you know, maybe it's 700, maybe it's 650, but it still gives me a good range. And of course, you're then your question must be, hmm, well, what's a good range? And so you're never really going to get much below 400 parts per million. I'll show you in the app. When I put it outside and just left it for a little while, where it was like all oxygen, not much carbon dioxide, then it got down to like the high 300s. And that's pretty typical. What's considered healthy and safe is 400 to 1,000 parts per million. That's pretty typical. Anything between 1,000 and 2,000, you can get complaints where people are drowsy and that the air quality is a little musty or a little stale. And above 2,000 is when you're getting issues with people having headaches or sleepiness or stuffy air. So you think about that and one of the most common places that happens is in a classroom where there's 25, 30, 35 kids jammed into a room. The windows are closed to avoid distraction actions and everyone's a little sleepy and everyone it's just like oh, I'm not sure I'm doing well here that could very well be the co2 level this is a perfect thing to have in the corner of the room so you can monitor that and you can say oh wow look on the bottom that little bar is now into arm the yellow or even into the red zone we need to deal with this we need to address this problem now on the app, you can actually set it to give you alerts or alarms. So that's even better. So the e-ink screen will also invert colors if the CO2 is higher than safety levels. And it's monitoring CO2 plus temperature plus relative humidity plus air pressure. Here's a close up so you can really see the screen and what's going on. As I said, it's a four year battery life if you switch it to 10 minute interval sampling. And the app, let's go, in fact, let me go ahead. I have an iPhone, so you can use this with iPhone or Android, and it's really easy to work with because it is a low power Bluetooth 5.0 device. So it's already connected again. So yes, I unboxed it, but prior to that, I've been experimenting with it. So I've already set it up in the app. So in the app, you can see it's getting my temperature and um, time and sunset and all of that information, that's just from the internet. But when I go into the actual unit, the IAM T1, now it's gonna show me the current CO2 level, that's that 607 parts per million. And remember, 400 to 1,000 is considered normal and healthy. And my indoor temperature is 74.8 degrees Fahrenheit with a 59% percentage of humidity. And the air pressure is 848 um, HPA. And that's usually air pressure. You're looking at if it's varying up and down, that'll tell you that there's a storm coming or something. So if we go to data, you can see here <laughs> where I had a little fun with it. So the lowest point on that spike is where I took it outside and just left it on my back deck, literally surrounded by plants and leaves. So it's really like base level lowest. And then I brought it in and just breathed on it. <laughs> so when you're breathing on it, you can get pretty high numbers because you're literally just overwhelming the sensor with CO2, but it's a good test. And you can see that what happened was that then it got sort of back to that normal. And so around 500 seems to be my normal level of CO2 in this space. And you can look at that or days or months or weeks or years. I mean, there's a lot of data and it's collecting it. And here's something super important is it's collecting all this data, but none of it is being uploaded. There's no personal information uploaded because the company's very conscious that we consumers want to actually manage the privacy of our own data. So I really appreciate that. We can look at temperature. And again, you can see when it went outside, it was a little cooler at humidity levels. And the reason there's a gap in that line is because I took the batteries out, put it back in the box and prepared for doing this video. So normally it would be a continuous line, but when I took it offline, it obviously couldn't collect data. And then finally, here's barometric pressure. And you can see, I'm not sure what happened with that big drop in the middle, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we don't have a hurricane or tornado outside. So I think that might just be because I was messing around with the um, setup and configuration. Speaking of which, you can go into it and you can do some settings. So notice here, 
that I can specify that I want alarms, I can change my measurement interval, and that's pretty important because right now I'm doing it every minute so you get a good interesting demo. But what I would probably set it to is like five minutes because I don't need to stretch out the battery to the maximum possible duration. But if you figure mathematically, if I do a five minute interval, that should give me two years of battery life off those two double A's. That's pretty good. In fact, let's change that now. So I'm gonna change that to five minute interval. And then we can set up with the alarms. I can update the firmware if that's necessary. And we can go into state settings where you can see it says that anything under a thousand, this is what I said earlier, anything under a thousand is good. Anything up to 1400 is okay. That's gonna be the yellow zone on the very bottom. And then anything over 1400 parts per million is gonna be considered unhealthy. Now you can adjust that if you want, but I would much more encourage you to think about how to change the environment to meet these numbers rather than to change these numbers so that you don't have the alarm go off. The alarm should not go off because your CO2 should not go that high. So that's pretty much everything. The app is really slick. The app supports um, iPhone widgets and Alexa, but I don't believe this device is integrated into that yet. So that's probably coming when that will happen, hopefully very soon. Now, in terms of this, it is five inches by five inches by 1.6 inches, and it's 10 ounces. It's really light. This is easily something you can just put on a shelf. It also has a hanging hook, so you can just hang it somewhere. And I just love these screens. I really like e-ink technology. It doesn't really work for a monitor for gaming or something, because it doesn't refresh that quickly. But once it gets its information, it's just sitting there. It doesn't need any more power from the system. So it's just a clean, crisp, easily read screen. And you could use this in a garage. You could have this in direct sunlight and it actually will be even easier to read. So really lots to like here. Not much else to talk about. If you're thinking about your air quality anywhere in your life or your children or your family or a grandma who has some asthma issues or something, then something like this is a fantastic addition to your sort of smart home setup definitely it's something worth checking out that's it now let's talk about price because it is a little spendy but you know versus having people with health issues then this is something where it's really not that big of an investment so this is the inkbird iam t1 smart indoor air quality monitor and it's 169.99 at amazon.com i promise you will unbox it and be up and rolling with the app within 90 seconds if not faster it's super easy to work with and then at any point you can just glance at this and know what's your air quality like so really it's expensive but it's not expensive because finally figuring out why you're homeschooling your children and they're always talking about wanting to go to sleep maybe you just need to open some windows and this will tell you that your air quality needs to be improved what a huge win so a big fan of it now before we're done i'm going to ask if you would be so kind as to subscribe to my channel just click on that subscribe button give me a thumbs up if you thought this was helpful and interesting most importantly this is a great addition to any smart home to make sure that you have a healthy indoor environment. That's all I got. I'll hope to catch you in my next video.